Hi, welcome to Cooking with Grandma. Uh, we will be starting our uh, course in about uh, five minutes. I look forward to seeing you all then. Collect your coffee, make yourself comfortable, and I'll see you soon.
Hi, Diane. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Hi, iPhone. Hi, Jan. Hi, Karen. Lovely to have everybody in class. I see you back, Diane. That's awesome to see you. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, and uh, Oh, um, iPhone, can I find out what is your name? <laughs> Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Lovely to have you uh, in class. Uh, if you wish hi. to speak. Hi, lovely to hear from you, Natalie. Where are you from, Natalie? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. North Carolina. Right. Okay. Uh, and Jan, where are you? Um, Karen and um, oh, we've got Cancer 56 as well. Lovely to have everybody with us. Oh, Karen, hi. Uh, Hello. Nice. Hi, lovely to hi. have you. Where are you from? Thank you. Um, I'm in um, Fairfax, Virginia. It's uh, just outside Washington, D.C. Okay, very nice. And uh, in, uh, oh, I can't pronounce it, Jen. Oh, what, Toa. Tona, or Tona. Um, I'm not being American myself, some of the names are very interesting as well. Welcome everybody to class. It's great to have you. Um, oh, great. I've got a gentleman in class as well. It's definitely cooking with grandma and grandpa today. So that is Awesome. Um, we are live streaming today as well. So we'll have people popping in and out of class as well. So before we begin, let's have a look. We're going to screen share um, and let's begin. Uh, let me turn it into a presentation. So we've got a presentation doesn't want to go to pre there we go gone to presentation yes cooking with grandma is great fun it's the one time the children talk while they are cooking because they they're not thinking they are just responding if you ask them when they come home from school how was your day you get the usual answer of fine that's it it was fine. But when they're cooking and you say, how was school? Then suddenly all sorts of little tidbits come out as to how their day really was. And so it's fun to cook and do things with them. Now, Get Set Up uh, helps you to learn new skills, hopefully, uh, just fun ideas. We learn from each other. If you wish to speak and you can't find your unmute button, the best way is to put your hand on your um, space bar. And while your hand is on your space bar, you are able to talk to me and then you can lift your hand from the space bar and you are then muted again. So it makes it a very easy way of answering something or asking a question. I don't ask you to turn off your microphones. I'm very happy to have a constant interaction with you at any time. If you want to type in at the top, that's also fine. I don't, it takes me time to to see your little typing and of course you've got your hand waves as well that you can put up which help me to do it as well. Um, if you're joined by live streaming, the best way to participate is to join uh, a re a, and register at the class because then you can participate and get all the handouts afterwards as well. If I mention any products, it's not because we are getting a, a kickback from it. We, it's just something I use. Now, a little bit about me. They've asked us to let you know who we are and what we are. Um, I'm Sue Murray. I come from Perth, Australia. I have been here for about three years now. Um, I lived in South Africa for 63 years. And so I, I, this is still fairly new to me being in Australia. I love it. I'm close to my grandchildren. I help to look after them at, in the afternoons at times. Um, my, I now have new grandchildren in South Africa who I now am a virtual grandma to. And all the things that I do in my 
lessons I can do with my virtual grandchildren. I just get mom or dad to set up the things on the other side. And then we do a Zoom and they are able to talk to me and be, we work as if we are a team in the same room. So everything we do works with our of grandchildren that are physically with us and our virtual grandchildren um, because it's important to stay in contact with them. I, I have been an educator for 44 years. I still do some teaching. Um, I love imparting knowledge to others and getting others to start thinking for themselves. Uh, so that is where my, my passion lies. I enjoy creating and making things, including puzzles, and have a love of animals. That's why I do my animal series on animals of Australia and animals of Africa. And I thoroughly enjoy being a get set up guide and I keep changing my presentations because I find new ideas and I try them out and then they get added to whatever I'm doing. So they are forever on the change. Uh, I have only been with Get Set Up since February, so I'm still fairly new at being a get, up, get set up guide. Cooking with, these are my two granddaughters here in Australia. They are older than my little ones in, Aust in uh, Africa. Um, cooking with grandma must never be stressful for you or for the children. So the simpler the things, the better. If you've got too many ingredients, then it's they want to touch everything and you're going, no, 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 not yet. Uh, now it's stressful. So simple, simple cooking, three ingredients, five ingredients at the most, then you are away. Um, don't stress if things don't go quite to plan. They will love whatever they're eating. <laughs> no matter whether it tastes right or not, they've made it. Therefore, they'll eat it. They might go, mm, not quite as nice as I thought, or wow, yummy, and you're going, I don't think so, but it doesn't matter. They are creating, they are learning. If it burns, it burns. We make another batch if for whatever we are doing. It does work. Old clothes are essential because otherwise they are putting their hands and the... <sighs> I would probably be shot by the people who make aprons. Aprons to me are useless. They cover the front very nicely, but what do they do with their hands? They wipe them on their bum. And now they've got flour on the bum or whatever. So what I do is not, to this day they decided they were not going to wear their, their clothes that I made. I take a dustbin bag, usually a white one. I cut a little hole in the top, put a little slit at the back. So it can fit over the head, two holes for the arms, and suddenly they've got an all over apron. It doesn't matter how dirty it gets, put it in some soapy water, hang it on the line, it's ready for next time. When it gets tatty, then you can put a new one, doesn't cost you very much to replace it. Um, so that's what, and when I'm doing crafts with them, we do the same. Then if the glue gets on or the paint gets on, it gets on what I'm, I'm covering them with. They don't like the black dustbin bags. They feel as if they're in a dustbin bag. But if you use green ones or white ones or any other color one, they're very happy to wear it. So um, that is it. They need to feel that they are able to relax and they are able to have fun. And so the, that is the essential thing is to have fun. Right. Now, we're going to start with three ingredient bakes. I use these all the time. My husband will say in the afternoon, oh, can't we have something for tea? And these take 10 minutes to make and they are delicious. So these are my three ingredient tea time bakes. We're going to do some non-baking as well. The first one is chocolate muffins. Who doesn't love a chocolate muffin? These are actually very healthy muffins because we use dark chocolate. Dark chocolate is good for you. My husband has had diabetes. He's almost got it totally under control naturally. And um, so he eats dark chocolate every day. It is good for you. It is healthy. So if you use dark chocolate, 
these muffins are actually healthy muffins. Uh, although the children won't necessarily know that, for them, it's just a chocolate muffin. You can preheat your oven to 180 degrees. Uh, unfortunately, I'm working in Australian measurements. You would have to go to Fahrenheit. I think it's uh, 375 uh, or 350. Um, and then you just have some muffin tray with the little cupcake liners. And all you do is melt the chocolate in a large bowl according to the packet. If you do it in a microwave, be careful because remember the chocolate starts cooking from the inside out and you can burn it so easily. For me, it's easier to make put a pot on the stove. I've got a little, uh, I call it a bonky, uh, it's like a little step that the children stand on, even though they are older. I prefer them to be above the pot than trying to peer into the pot. That's when they burn themselves. So if they stand on something that's raised, they are then able to see in at the same height as you, and they're less likely to have any um, upset. Uh, I don't use too many things where there's a lot of heat, um, a little bit of warming of things uh, on the stove, then they are standing at a good height in order to be able to see. You, um, I put, the, I put uh, some water in a pot and into that I just rest a bowl that fits the right size of the pot and then I just let the water, the steam, warm the bottom of the bowl and then your chocolate melts very nicely in there. Once you've done that, you can add eggs one at a time. I beat the egg before I put it in. Now, if I've got two granddaughters there at the same time, what I do is I halve the ingredients, half into one bowl, half into another bowl. They each get a turn to do their own thing because otherwise, ah, she took longer than I did. I didn't get a turn. So if they've each got their own, there's no fighting. They do their own thing. And even the little cupcake liners, we put the initial on the cupcake liner, no fighting as to whose cupcake is whose. <laughs> Much more, less stressful for grandma. So I just, when I'm beating up, I, I will, with the three eggs, what I do is I, I'm sort of half the egg, the, the one that I've beaten, uh, a little bit into each. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly right. And half a cup of self-raising flour, a quarter of a cup of self-raising flour into each of the bowls. Very easy. They are then able to do their mixing by themselves in their little bowls. And then all you do is put it into the little cupcake holders and pop it in the oven for about 15 minutes. Um, you can put a little wooden skewer in to check that it's cooked. Um, my older granddaughter will go off and do an activity. My younger granddaughter, her nose is right up against the stove watching as the cupcakes grow. Very important for her. But again, just reminding them it's hot. <laughs> they only have to burn their nose once. They'll never do it again. But you don't want that. So i um, I always have some burn cream nearby just as a safety precaution in case they touch something they shouldn't. These rise beautifully and are so easy to make. They're all things you usually have in your um, cupboards, so it's very easy. The dark chocolate is what gives it its flavor. If they, um, you don't go above 70% dark chocolate because otherwise it becomes a bit bitter and then they don't enjoy them. So 70% dark chocolate is sort of the highest you go. Um, you can also get the chocolate drops, the little chocolate chip pieces um, in dark chocolate and then you just melt those. Those are also perfect. You also get melting chocolate, the dark melting chocolate. And again, then the temp, then it is quite right. But you can also grate your own one as well. I've done it with the dark chocolate and orange flavor. And that's really nice as a cupcake as well. Any questions? Any thoughts? Not yet. Okay, let's continue. Now, these, the next two are scones, both firm favorites in our household. The first one uh, is cheese scones. And these we often have as a lunchtime meal, not necessarily as a, 
an evening uh, as a tea time treat because you can add to them and make them into savory scones. Um, two cups, two, two, two. If it's only a, if it's only the two of you, you can go one, 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 because that makes um, a decent number of them for you to just eat as a meal for you there and then. Um, and then you don't have any leftover. It makes um, uh, 12 muffins altogether. So if you want to only make six muffins, then you halve your recipe. Um, you've got uh, two cups of, of flour, two cups of milk, two cups of cheese. Very simple. It, all things you have in your house at any time. Well, usually. Um, you preheat your oven again to 375 or 350, um, depending on the kind of oven you've got. You grease your uh, muffin trays. And then all you do is put the ingredients in all together. Very, very simple. Your flour, then your uh, milk, and finally your cheese. And surprisingly, the best way to do it is not to mix it with a spoon. It's to mix it with a butter knife. And it, it, at first you think that's never going to mix. It mixes very quickly. And it makes it very light and fluffy. I learned that that from an elderly lady many years ago. She used to win all the competitions. Her scones were always the lightest, fluffiest scones at the show. And, and as I got, I got to know her very well. And she said, no, no, that's my secret. And then when she got older, she said, I've got to pass my secret on. And she gave me the secret was just using the butter knife and sieving the flour more times than once. And when I started doing that, I ended up with these awesome fluffy scones as well. Now, what's nice about these scones is you can add things to it. You can add bacon, you can add ham, you can add leftover mince, you can add corn, you can add sweet potato, you can add zucchini. You can literally add anything that you would like to make it into a savory muffin. And then when it comes out, put a little bit of butter on it and eat it for your lunch. You've then got your vegetables, you've then got your meat, you've got everything in one meal. And my grandchildren really enjoy that when they come home from school. If, if it doesn't take too long to cook. Um, I often do it before they get home. But if, if it's an afternoon where they haven't got an activity, then they can make it and eat slightly later and have those. They really enjoy them. School holidays, an ideal time for that. I see there's a chat. Let me just ask. Uh, no sugar added, Vivian? No, no sugar. The, the, um, the chocolate is, is sweet enough. If they find it's not, I add some stevia to it. I don't use ordinary sugar with the children if I can help it. Um, a little bit of st cooking stevia. And uh, but I, I usually don't. And it, it actually is sweet enough. It's not a very sweet um, muffin. Um, my younger granddaughter loves sweet things. So she inevitably adds a little bit of stevia to hers. The other granddaughter likes it just as it is. We eat it just as it is. Right. Um, any questions to do with these cheese scones? Right, another question coming in. Uh, let's have a look. Um, what type of cheese? Cheddar cheese or Parmesan cheese gives it a better bite. Um, and uh, uh, one of the things that I like to add when it's just my husband and I that are eating the cheese scones is a little bit of mustard. Just gives it a bite. Um, it brings out the flavor of the cheese. So, yes, you need mature cheddar cheese or Parmesan cheese or a combination of the two. Then you get the really rich, cheesy flavor. If you use something like mozzarella, it's too bland and then it's like eating cardboard. So you do need a nice, tasty uh, cheese, um, one that's got a bite to it. That makes it taste just that much better. Um, anything else? Any other questions? Right, let's continue. Welcome, whoever's just popped into class. Uh, lovely to have you. 
Now, the third one of my no uh, taste ones, and this one, it, this picture here is actually my own scones. Uh, when I'd finished making them, I took a photo of them. They, they're not the ones that you see in the fancy magazines. These are mine. And they are easy, quick, simple, and very tasty to do. Again, just preheat your oven to 350 or 375 um, and line your baking tray with just some baking pa paper. And the three ingredients we use are unusual. Thickened cream, lemonade, and self-raising flour. And as we are seeing more and more in the way people are studying, that cream is actually good for you. When I was young, cream was bad for you. Butter was bad for you. But these are good fats. So therefore, they are healthy. So you've got your cream, your one cup of lemonade. If you are very strict and don't want sugar, you can use a sugar-free lemonade as well. Um, and then three cups of self-raising flour. I halve this because um, I find that we, we only want a few for just the two of us. If it's the grandchildren, they want to take home for granny and grand, for mom and dad and for everybody else in the family, then uh, you make full quantities and they both make full quantities and there's plenty to take home. Um, you add the cream, lemonading, lemonade and self-raising flour in a big bowl and then mix with your butter knife, just as I said before, to combine them and don't over mix the dough because then they don't rise and you end up with these very flat, not very, well, they still taste okay, but they're very flat. And that's the one thing you have to impress on the children, the less mixing the better because the first time they are in and they are mixing and they can be a little disappointed when theirs don't rise. Um, you put the dough onto a lightly floured surface and press gently and make sure that your, your um, scones are a decent size before they even start to rise. So, and then you can use your different cookie shape cutters to cut your dough. Um, and then put the scones onto the, uh, the baking tray and any bits left over, I usually just make into a ball and I have one funny shaped scone at the end of the little bits and pieces. Then you just cook it in the oven for 10 minutes or until golden brown. All of these recipes I give you at the end in my um, mail that I send to you afterwards. So they're all there for you to try. These are delicious. I then whip up a little bit of extra cream to pop on top of the jam. Uh, I also do them with cream cheese sometimes. Um, and that also tastes really tasty as well. So I then have the scone. It's a sweet scone and the cream cheese makes an interesting combination taste. But it's up to you as to what the sky's the limit as to what you put on your, your scones. Any questions? Are any of you inspired to start making some of these things? They're not. They're simple and easy to do. Um, I, I buy thickened cream at, 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 at my local supermarket. We've got, uh, you can see there's whipping cream, thickened cream. They're the different types. It's, it's just basically cream. It, it's, when I was younger, it was just called cream. Um, but they call it thickened cream um, in the supermarket. But uh, if I can't get that, I just buy cream and I, it works the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but thickened cream is the one that's uh, in the supermarket. Mm. Any, anybody mm -hmm. else? Yeah, no? I, love, yeah. I, love, I love scones, but I've never really tried making them. But if oh, you can, hi, no, Chris. <laughs> you only take 10 minutes, you say? 10 minutes? Yes, 10 minutes and wow. they're ready. Mm. Quick, quick, wow. quick, easy to bake and delicious. Yeah. I love those. I love those. I love it. But I just never tried making it. I look simple. Well, how about simple. making them today or tomorrow for the weekend? <laughs> A good yeah, idea to nice. be able to put together. <laughs> Excellent. It's half past ten in the night, so tomorrow. 
<laughs> oh yes and, and they are they they're perfect for for two days they really are very tasty for two days so um after that if i'm going to make them last longer i actually freeze them and then i just warm them slightly uh, in the oven or in the microwave just to get them a little bit warm and then they are perfect again but really these lemon scones and with it being lemonade it gives it just yeah. a slightly yeah. different flavor i love lemon oh. simple simple ingredients this is the key when mm-hmm. cooking with your grandchildren make it simple make it tasty that's what they want and they love cooking day they really enjoy uh, we have different days that we do different things we make crafts we do um, making structures we do all sorts of things Um, and the neighbors come and join in too they've discovered that there's rather interesting things being made when the grandchildren come Uh, so I never know how many I'm cooking with or making things with I just make sure I've got enough and then we can we can do it all right now Uh, Now, these are no-bake treats. These treats, you do use the top of the stove, but you do not use the the oven at all. Um, Some of them are from when I was young, and I loved them, and my my children loved them, and now my grandchildren love them. And so we are going to be making healthy ones, and the one is not so healthy, but grandma is allowed to treat at times. Now, the first one is the marshmallow treats. This is the one that comes from when I was a kid. My mom did it with me. I did it with my boys. My boys do it with their the girls as well. Um, my, young, my younger son in South Africa uh, doesn't do it very often. He's very strict about what my, my little grandson eats. But he's th- this is one treat he will make with, with Marlowe. He really enjoys it. You just use butter. You can use mini marshmallows or you can take the big ones and just take a pair of scissors and cut them up into pieces. You just need to wash the scissors afterwards, but it's very easy. So you don't have to find the baby marshmallows. You can certainly do it without. Um, And then Rice Krispie cereal, which the children all love. Uh, So the only bad part is the marshmallow uh, that you put in. And then What you do is you melt your butter in a large saucepan over a low heat. Uh, Never do it over a high heat. It burns. Um, Low heat. And then you add your marshmallows and keep stirring. And it becomes a sticky kind of gooey. Well, while it's in the bowl, it's fine. Um, And then you add your uh, cereal on top of that and stir it all in. And then you taking that, you then put it into either a very thin baking tray, if you want thin ones, or a thicker container. It's up to you as to how thick you want them. I usually make thin ones because then I can cut them into squares and they're not getting too much sugar at one time. So I make lots of thinner ones rather than a a a few very thick ones. I, I suppose they're actually eating exactly the same, but in my mind, it doesn't seem quite so much sugar that they're munching if it's a thin one Um, and when it's cooling you then cut it with a sharp knife into squares and then you've got them we put them into I've got grandma's grandma's jar and grandma's jars always got cookies in it and the first thing they do as they arrive is can I have a cookie almost before they've said hello Uh, but (laughs) there's always something nice in the cookie jar for them um that is that is just something i always do for them but again very simple very easy to make you can decorate the top of it with um vermicelli or anything you want or just leave it plain it really doesn't matter um as to how you decorate it um but it's it really does work very well This is a healthy one, which I put into their lunch snacks when they stay over the night and I take them to school. This is one of their snacks that they get in their school lunches. You use uh, the quick cooking oats, uh, two cups, two and a half cups of Rice Krispie cereal, uh, some raisins. If they don't like raisins, then you can leave the raisins out. I find that 
at first they say, ah, don't, and then when the, once they're eating it, they're very happy. They don't even notice the raisins in it. Um, brown sugar. If you don't want to use brown sugar, the brown sugar gives it its coloring. So if you want to use stevia instead of brown sugar, you can. It then is just a very much paler cookie um, than, than the one here. Corn syrup is much healthier than using any of the other syrups. Um, crunchy peanut butter. Now, if you have a child that has a nut allergy or you have a rule at school like they have here in Australia, no nuts allowed at school for fear of people who have a nut allergy, uh, no peanuts, I should say, um, then you use any of the other nut butters. You would use your macadamia nut butter, you'd use uh, your cashew nut butter, your almond nut butter, uh, any of the nut butters would work. So don't be put off if you've got a child who does have a problem with a nut allergy. Um, and then uh, a teaspoon of vanilla essence. Again, very, very simple mixing they're all mixed together and then you, uh, all the dry ingredients are put together the cereal the raisins and so on then you combine the sugar the corn syrup in a saucepan uh, of medium heat and just heat it then remove it from the heat and stir in the peanut butter so that it now becomes a really nice creamy mixture um, and your vanilla essence and pour it over the cereal mixture and mix it in well. What I do is I often make a well in the center. I pour into the well and then I bring the, the oats into this well in the center. I find that works very well for the mixing. And then you press it into the pan that you have got ready. Once it's cooled, cut it into squares or slices or whatever you want. And you have your healthy, um, cereal bar that you have made with them. They love making these. Any questions? Any thoughts, any changes, ideas that you might add to it? But they work very, very well indeed. Yeah, I was thinking if, if, if in adequate reasons, you can probably mix some other dried fruits. If any are. dried fruit. Any yeah. dried food. I chop up um, um, apricots, dried apricots. Yeah. I put in, um, uh, what are these berries that I've got here? Cranberries, cranberries, any of the, the different things that you've got. I munch cranberries when I'm, I'm hungry. Um, so you can put anything in. Just chop. You can chop it up small. So they're tiny pieces and they're not coming across a whole thing. You can pre-do that before they come. And then they've just got some mixed fruit that is put in. I also don't put in whole whole nuts. If they are, if I'm going to put nuts, I, I would then crunch them up into small nuts and put those in as well. If I'm not using peanuts, then um, definitely using other nuts. Well, I was thinking um, to make it healthy. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't use the brown sugar, but um, or the corn syrup. I would rather use some honey. If yes, if yes. That Honey would work, definitely. Yeah. I, I use stevia when I'm doing it. Uh, sometimes I'll use stevia and honey. Okay. Yep. I didn't even think okay. about saying that because I'm using honey a recipe have, that I had. And in Canada, like spring is here, so we will be having maple syrup. Maple syrup is wonderful. Mm. Yeah, yeah, the pure one, straight from the mm -hmm. trees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I use Canadian maple syrup. Um, I, and it comes in a glass jar and it's a yeah. bit more than the other syrups, but it's, it's pure. just so much better and pure. Yeah. We very much, my husband and I are very much into organic. Um, those, that's very much our, our thing is to try and find as much organic as we can. It is getting much, much bigger, the organic market here. Um, and in the supermarkets, there's a lot more organic things than there were before. But if we can, that's our, our first choice is organic. Yeah. All right. Now, this one is kind of the naughty one. Um, although um, not really because I use stevia instead of white sugar, mm -hmm. butter, milk, unsweetened cocoa powder, 
oats and vanilla essence. So although it looks like it is really, really going to be a naughty treat, if you've used stevia or you've used uh, erythrol, or there's quite a few natural ones that are out, you can use those. They will then, um, they are very good and healthy. Um, all you do is place your um, foil on your cookie sheet. You combine your sugar, butter, milk, and cocoa into, in a saucepan. Cook it over a medium heat, stirring continuously so that it doesn't burn. Um, and then it comes to a rolling boil, a very gentle boil. You don't want a bubbling boil that is popping up and down. Take it from the heat and cool it for a few minutes, then add everything else in and then put the mixture in drops um, onto, on, onto your baking tray. Now, as it goes on and flattens, that uh, I let it cool to a certain extent. And if they want shapes, they then cut the shapes out and they eat all the little bits that were around the shapes because now you've got lots of little bits around the shapes. I put, if they're not there and I'm making this, I put all the little bits into a separate jar and they can go and buy, take a little treaty bit when they feel like it. Um, or they've got the, the whole shapes. They can make butterflies, flowers, all sorts of shapes you can cut it into. Christmas time, you can cut it into Christmas trees. You can certainly go to town with a lot of different things. Uh, and then you've got uh, a really interesting treat for them to eat. Any queries, questions? Well, we're having Easter soon, so Easter should be. Make it into Easter eggs. Make that shape into Easter so eggs. Make like them oval. <laughs> they look Make like them like oval. Bunnies. <laughs> they look like bunnies. Easter bunnies. Yeah. Yeah. Make bunnies. Make they, they make bunnies. eggs, bunnies, all those sort of things for next week. Yes. You could have an array of things made for them. Ooh. Now, I think treats. Um, again, I don't you you can get the non-sugar um icing sugar. Uh, well, the, the non-processed sugar ones, the, and they work very well as well. Um, again, I often use stevia. It works just as well. Um, I make my icing sugar, and then you can set them different themes. You could say today we're making animals, and they have their biscuit, and they make animal shapes. Uh, and animal faces, or we making monsters, or we making, and the older children, you can set them a more difficult task. They would obviously make things like the koalas and so on, while the younger ones would maybe make something that could be anything. If you're not sure what the animal is, and they ask you about their animal, ask them questions back. Don't guess the animal. Um, say to them, hmm, what sound does your animal make? Um, where do I find your animal? So you pretend you're learning, but meantime, you're finding out what the animal is that they have made. And then you can say, oh, wow, what a wonderful cow or what a wonderful dog or what a wonderful chicken or whatever. But you are then not offending them at all. Uh, you have found out because if you say, oh, I like your dog and they look at you and they go, that's a pig. Now you've got a bit of a problem because you've misnamed their animal. So the easy way is to ask. Um, to make your icing sugar animals, all you need is some biscuits, some mixed sweets. There are plenty of the sugar-free sweets you can get. Or if you're having an indulgent day, any sweets. Um, and then they can make insects, animals, uh, people. You can set a different um, theme and set the number of biscuits they're going to ice. They're only icing three biscuits or they're only icing four biscuits. So you actually set the number. You can, when I was a child at birthday parties, an ice cream cone on a biscuit was always the best take home. All you do is take your biscuit, uh, put your ice, put your cone on, or cut your cone or in half or just slice a piece off your, your top from your bottom, put the bottom onto your um, 
biscuit with a little bit of icing sugar. Uh, put a marshmallow as the face. You can then put the eyes and the mouth on it. And then the top is the, the hat of the clown. Inside, you can put Smarties, you could put um, whatever you want to put inside. So when they, oh, you could even put a little gift, little toy or something as the take home from a party. And then they, when they open it, they've got this surprise inside. It's not just a cone with icing on it. Uh, so that makes for a fun idea as well. Anybody got any other ideas? Okay, right. Now we're going to the healthy fun. Fruity ideas. Now these come into my snacks, my simple snacks that we make for, for children is taking what you are going to feed them. And instead of making it into a fruit salad and giving them a fruit salad, you cut the fruit into different shapes. Uh, and then they create their own insect or their own animal or their own scene God, that they're making. The one rule that is vital is what you touch, you eat. So if they take some fruit to make their picture, their animal, their whatever, they have to eat it afterwards. You can't put it back on the plate after, because you don't like it. So you have to choose wisely what do I want? What am I doing? And once you do that, then it's very easy for them to be able to do it. Your older children can actually cut up their um, apples themselves, turn them into crabs, turn them into fish, turn them into cars. Oh, apples can be turned into anything. Um, so then you eat your apple afterwards. It's a fun way instead of just crunching on an apple. Go and eat an apple. Ugh. Go and eat a crab. Ah, yeah. Oh, go and eat a, a, a car. Have a car race. You're using your apple and some grapes, you make a car race. You race your car to the end and you eat your car. So there are fun ways of doing things and having some fun with your fruit. But it, what you take you have to eat. And that is a rule that has stayed in my stayed in my classroom when I was teaching and it stayed in my home when my kids were small. The same goes for my grandchildren. What you touch, you, you eat. But you can really make your fruit into wonderful things instead of just a fruit salad. And so then they make butterflies, they make flowers, they make dragonflies, um, they make all sorts of things to go with it. Um, you can use for your feelers, you can if you haven't got any fruit or something that can do it, use um, pipe cleaners. Take some pipe cleaners. They can always be washed and reused and you can turn those into the feelers or whatever you want with your or um, animals that you do. You can also use Google Eyes. They also work very well. They can put those on with a little bit of mayonnaise or you can use any um, food ingredient to stick your Google Eyes on. Just don't eat them. Um, they don't taste very nice. The one that's done with bananas is just turning a banana into a more interesting arrangement. Um, and that is to take your banana, use a nut butter on your banana, and then put a different fruit. You can put a variety of fruits or just one. And then you can actually share your piece of banana with uh, others. So everybody gets to taste the other one's topping for the banana. And so that is also a nice way for them to be able to taste a variety. Oh, I do like the, the uh, strawberries, but I don't really like the blackberries. They didn't taste that nice or the, the raspberries or whatever you have chosen. So they can then be discerning about the flavor that comes through. They, one thing to be important is it's a very, very thin layer of your of your nut butter to, to that you put on uh, because otherwise that overpowers the flavor 
but any nut butter and banana always tastes really nice. So then the sky's the limit again as to what you put on top of it. Any any ideas? Any questions? I love that um, the I, I, this is this is the best um, idea for the fruits. I love that. And uh, with the banana, I love the peanut butter and the banana. I would sprinkle cinnamon on mine. Oh, yeah. Cinnamon's also a good one to sprinkle on there. And cinnamon, of course, is very healthy. Yes. And uh, I, I like the way of making a, a scene with your, your banana and your make a, a palm tree. And uh, they can have such fun making their things. You can, if they're young, you can say to them, what would you like to make? Let me make one to help you or, uh, and then they make some more that look the same as yours. If they are still learning how to shape things, but usually they only follow you once. And after that, the mind then takes off and they make their own creations. So usually they just need a little nudge as to where they're going. You can show them a picture or two, but you take it away straight away way then they have to use their imagination because with the working on their tablets all the time the forms of imagination have disappeared compared to what we used to have so try and get them using their imagination it is an important thing to do so uh, but they, they, these are just fun ways and most of my snack ideas are to do with creating something that's attractive that they will eat all different types of foods we do as our snacks uh, that can be used as meals or snacks but again it's the look it's the creation of making it that makes it so exciting Right. Anybody got anything else to share? Right. Now, let's have a look and see. Uh, we're at the end now. If you've got any new ideas, please add them. I've had some lovely ideas added. Let us know if we're doing the right thing or whether we're not doing the right thing. That also helps us uh, to be able to create more um, I, I do all the creative type um, classes because that's my kind of thing. My husband does more of the, the uh, technology, te te tech things, Zoom and so on. Although he does his microgreens, so he's also into healthy eating and healthy living, far more than me probably. Um, and now, so if you would like a copy, of a request, you can request it at helpitgetsetup.io. Uh, at the end, I will send you an email after the class with all the recipes on, on it. So you've got all your different recipes to do. We do do some more recipes in the snacks as well. I hope there are others that you might want to have a look at and see to help uh, find some new ways to entertain your grandchildren not using their devices, their iPads, and their phones. It's so much nicer to have them actually creating and making. I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, I hope that uh, you have been able to learn some um, ideas and come up with some new things and uh, that you've been able to create for yourself, let alone creating for your grandchildren. Anybody got anything they'd like to say? Yes, Diane. Sue, I used your tip this morning about asking what sound mm -hmm. the, the animal made. It uh -huh. turned out it was a robot. Wow. It <laughs> worked really good doing that, asking what sound. <laughs> Great. I'm so glad. Yes, I, I discovered that in the classroom because they get very upset if you've chosen the wrong thing and then they think they can't do it. So um, it does work indeed. Ah, oh, lovely. Anybody else got any ideas, anything they'd like to say? And please, if you've got ideas or recipes that you think would be of use to other people, please bring them to the to class um, so that we can do it. Um, and so, yes, it works so well. Yeah, two bowls, two children, three bowls, three children. It's the only way. Otherwise, there's an almighty fight. I have had, uh, I think I learned the hard way not so long ago. 
uh, we were mixing everything with a mixer in a bowl. And they decide, one decided the other one had had um, more time with the mixer and lifted the mixer out of the bowl without turning it off. And I had stuff in many, many directions, including my clothes and my ceiling and my walls. So we learned the hard way. <laughs> so that now two bowls, two places, your own. <laughs> Definitely works. All right. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope to see you again in some of the other classes. Uh, I hope you've been able to learn and enjoy and have a lovely evening. I am now heading into uh, getting myself ready to do, I'm doing simple moving toys in an hour's time, things that move, and those are awesome um, because anything that moves is great um, you make something and it doesn't move it sits make something and it moves suddenly it's got a life of its own so we're going to be doing simple moving toys in an hour's time have a great evening i hope to see you all again enjoy bye for now thank you very much lovely Pleasure. Good night. thank you